Hey, how you doing today? Today we have a 2002 Ford Taurus with a V6. This V6 has a misfire at idle. Once you bring the RPM up about 2000, the misfire goes away. So this is an idling misfire style problem. The check engine light is not on, so let's connect a scan tool, look at the Mode 6 data, and see if Mode 6 can help us determine which cylinder or cylinders are misfiring. We're going to check the scan tool data on an e-scan. The e-scan has the ability to pull the Mode 6 data and decrypt the hexadecimal numbers that come out into a usable method. So let's do that. Here we have the e-scan. We're going to go to Mode 6. We're going to select Ford Motor Car Company and we are going to read all Mode 6 data. Here's the Mode 6 data. Now if you look right through here is the misfire detection software. This car detects no misfire, they're all at zero. Now what this means is that the vehicle doesn't detect the misfire, but you can feel this vehicle misfire. Now let's use the e-misfire software to find this misfire. We're going to place the e-misfire tailpipe probe into the exhaust tailpipe. The tailpipe probe watches the volume of air moving in and out of the tailpipe and it correlates that pressure change with a spark that's going to one of the cylinders. This will allow the machine to synchronize the exhaust pulse to the engine location. This will show us where the misfire is. Now we're going to put the Venturi into the tailpipe on this Ford Taurus. Now we need to put the sync probe onto a spark plug wire so the e-misfire can synchronize the ignition pulse to the exhaust pulse. Now we're going to hook up the ignition pickup to channel 2 on the e-scope limited. We're then going to put the probe on a spark plug wire. Now we're going to use the e-misfire software. In the software program I want to select misfire. Now I want to configure the machine, so we need to find Ford. We need to go to a 2002. We need the six cylinder. So now the machine is configured. We need to do one more thing. We've connected the probe to cylinder six, so we need to tell the machine that. Right now we have cylinder one being shown. We need this to say six and now the machine knows which cylinder fired so it can sync the pulse. Now let's start this Ford Taurus. Now that the engine is running, let's take a look at the e-misfire software to see which cylinder is misfiring. As we can see, cylinder one indicates that we have a dead misfire. The misfire light is activated and the steady miss is on. Let's look at the waveform. We go to the misfire tab and open up the misfire tab. Cylinder 1 indicates that we have a misfire occurring right now. We can see the waveform as a steep drop and rise in the number 1 cylinder box. This indicates that cylinder 1 is misfire. Now that we know that cylinder 1 has been identified as the misfiring cylinder, we are going to remove cylinder one spark plug and install a simple compression hose into that cylinder. We will then connect a pressure transducer to that cylinder so we can tell if we have a problem with compression. Cylinder one is the back front spark plug. We now need to take that spark plug out to do our testing. Now that we have the spark plug out, let's install the compression hose. We're going to install the compression hose in this back cylinder, cylinder one. Now we're going to connect the pressure transducer to the hose. Now that we have the compression sensor connected to cylinder one, and we have the EMIS fire ready to get that information, we need to do a cranking test first. So let's disconnect the coil. Now we're going to take a vacuum pressure transducer and we're going to connect it to a common vacuum port, preferably very close to the throttle box. There's a major hose right in the back. We're going to pull this hose and we're going to install this right there.
Now we're going to plug this in to channel 3. Now that we got the manifold pressure transducer on the intake, we're going to start this engine. We're going to pause that data and now we're going to take an in-depth look at this. We're going to take the zoom window feature and we're going to zoom in on two. Now what we want to do is get cursors and we're going to mark each top dead center location. We're going to mark the other top dead center location and we're going to mark cylinders. We're going to adjust this to a six cylinder engine and it will mark our cylinders for us. We're interested in the intake manifold vacuum. So we're going to come over and we're going to boost this. Now, what we can see, we're going to boost this one more time and we have two cylinders that have positive pressures. Cylinder one and the third cylinder has a positive pressure as well, which is cylinder two. One and two both have bad intake valves. Let's get the cursors and we'll mark the zero plane of pressure and we can see that both of these came to a positive location. If you note, this is marking top dead center for that cylinder. So as the piston came up, it forced pressure into the intake from that piston and this piston also leaked pressure into the intake forcing pressure. This engine has two problems, cylinder one and cylinder two, that both show an intake valve problem. Now that we're going to start the car, this spark plug wire is off of the spark plug. We're going to need to ground that spark plug. So we're going to take a spark load tester and we're going to close that load tester all the way up so we don't have any RFI to interfere with this waveform. Now that we have a running waveform, let's go to analyze data. This is the live waveform actively. We have put cursors onto the waveform to locate top dead center, bottom dead center, top dead center, bottom dead center, top dead center. This is the power stroke, the exhaust stroke, the induction stroke, and the compression stroke. Each one of these lines is relative to mark where the cam timing is. So let's look at that cam timing. Right here, the cam timing is given by a green light, and it's basically about 12 degrees advanced, which is very good. The intake cam is about zero from target. The cam timing is also given over here, which shows that it's good. So basically my compression is 54 to 60 pounds of pressure. That is plenty of pressure. So with the piston running and the velocity of the piston going much faster, the pressure isn't able to escape as easily. We almost have the same running pressure as we did cranking pressure. Since cranking the piston is moving much more slowly, it allows pressure to leak out of a valve or by the rings much more readily. As you can now see, two cylinders, cylinder one and cylinder two, both have an intake valve that has a problem. This is a very hard diagnostic because sometimes this motor runs fine, other times this engine misfires. It makes it really difficult to find these types of problems. The e-misfire makes this quite easy and quick to diagnose. This could have come to your shop where you would have lost a lot of diagnostic time, which is money. What you need for your shop is the EMIS fire detection system.